everyone, how are you guys doing? It is a great pleasure to be here with Ding Liren for this Q&A session. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Ding Liren, how are you? Uh, I'm good, although it's already 10 at night. Okay. <laughs> time for praying, so today is more relaxed. Okay, okay. Already in your pyjama, right? Ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Uh, yes, after this interview. <laughs> all right, so first of all, we're going to make a short introduction about you. Um, okay. So remarking your best achievements in your chess career. So Ding Liang was, was born in Wenzhou, China. Sorry for my pronunciation, in 1992. So he's 27 years mm -hmm. old. He's the current world number three with 27.91. Ding has been three-time Chinese chess champion, and he finished second of the Chess World Cup in 2017 and 19. And you have been the first Chinese uh, player ever to play in a candidates tournament. Uh, you also managed to, to get a nice streak, being undefeated in classical chess from August 2017 to November 2018. So that is more than yeah. one year. So basically, a lot of people were getting pregnant. They had the babies, and then you were still winning games and making draws, yeah? Not losing a single game. <laughs> so, yes, uh, yes. yeah, that was a record of 29 victories, 71 draws, and this 100-game unbeaten streak was the longest in top-level chess history until Magnus Carlsen surpassed it in <laughs> 2019. <laughs> uh, July 2016. <laughs> With a blitz rating of 28.75, you were the highest rated blitz player in the world. And in August 2019, you won yeah. the Singfield Cup with two wins, nine draws, beating the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen in the playoffs. <laughs> and uh, finally, you are also a graduate of Zhejiang <laughs> Wenzhou High School. And uh, <laughs> good Chinese, right? Yeah. And the law school of Peking <laughs> University. And uh, yeah. you have won team gold medals in 2014 and 2018 and individual bronze and gold medals in 2014 and 2018. So an impressive CV. Yeah. And uh, so as you know, we have been gathering questions from all our premium members in Chess24. They really want to know about you. They all love you. Uh, there are many, many people who admire you as a chess player, as a person. But before we come to those questions, I would like to ask you a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, I think people would love to know uh, your opinion about the Legends Cup. What are your impressions of the tournament, about the organization? We know it, it was not your best performance, but, but what do you think? What are your impressions about this Legends Cup? Yes, uh, first of all, I, I like this lineup. That, um, it's a mix of uh, four young players and six uh, very experienced and very strong players, although they are not at their peak, they're not at their best, but they are mm -hmm. um, many of the former world champions and the others are uh, runner-up up of the uh, world championship. So it's, uh, right. yes, it's like uh, very, um, Good player, uh, but uh, actually, uh, for myself, it's a very bad performance. I think the main reason is I somehow underestimated uh, the legend's strings. Mm -hmm. strings of, <laughs> yes, somehow I thought it might be a little bit easier to play against old guys than the young guns. Yeah, but they still have the power, right? <laughs> yes, but <coughs> uh, I'm totally wrong. Uh, yeah, I want to play some uh, attacking games against uh, in the first match against uh, Boris Gelfand. Right. But it turns out to be a mistake since uh, uh, I cannot handle these very complicated positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, were maybe you a little bit tired because uh, you guys have been playing like a lot of super tournaments in like the last weeks? Or maybe knowing that you were almost qualified for the final, that took you uh, some motivation maybe? Yes, I'm tired, but I think not because uh, games or the or there are too many tournaments, uh, mainly because of the time. Yes, you are playing in the late night, right? Over there. Yeah, since the game starts at 10, mm -hmm. and normally if there are four rounds, if every round uh, there are one hour, so maybe I will finish at 2 a.m. Yeah. And then... uh, <laughs> that's too late, right? You're, you're normally going to bed uh, pretty earlier, right? Not so earlier, but also after the game, it's not so easy to sleep uh, right. immediately. Yeah. You still have all that energy in your body, right? And it's not easy to, to relax, right? Yes, of course. Okay. There are moves and games. Um, Cross your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so now you're playing in the Kiva finals of the Magnus Tour, um, precisely against Magnus Carlsen. Do you think you have chances to beat him? Uh, I must admit that the chances is low. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Since but, but, he had, uh, but you've done that before already. Sorry? You've done that, for example, in the Sinkfield Cup, right? You beat him even in the in the tie break. Uh, yes, I beat him in Sinkfield Cup, but uh, it's not happened every time. If, mm -hmm. if somebody can easily beat him, then it he, he won't be Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, he, right. He seldom loses. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to ask you another question before we go to the question from the premium members. So I read in the uh, Wikipedia, in your Wikipedia English page, that you have studied law uh, mm -hmm. at the Peking University. Yeah. So during this period, <coughs> did you combine it with chess? Or when did you decide you, you will be a professional chess player? How did you manage all this? Uh, yes, I go to university at 2012 mm -hmm. and finish it. On in 2000, uh, 2000, uh, 2017. Uh, uh -huh. 2017. Yes, I studied for five years. Most okay. of them studied four years, but for me, I, I need more time. And. <laughs> <laughs> So, so have when you thought, I study in yeah, the yeah. university, yes. Tell uh, me, tell me. Of course, I was uh, after the course, after the uh, every day's uh, course examinations. Of course, I will start. I will uh, preserve some time for the chess. Mm -hmm. But also. Uh, I can tell a story that uh, in the military training of the university, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have to stand, uh, stand in, um, just do nothing, just to stand and yeah. sometimes you walk and Sometimes you have to uh, get up at at very late to to guard the door just to, mm -hmm. just to experience um, get that experience. Okay. And what? the late night when I get up, uh, I I still thinking about chess. Even if I'm doing the job. <laughs> yeah, chess all the time. Yeah. Right? But, but have you thought yeah. about working as a lawyer in the future or or you prefer chess? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, law, right? no, no. Actually, yeah, at the time I study in the university, I must 
I understand that I just want to get some experience and um, get some knowledge, but also get the uh, degree from the university. I know that my profession profession would be chess player. Yeah. All right, so, okay. So we start with the questions from the users. I like this one. If you had to use three words to describe yourself, what would it be? Three words to describe Dean Leary. Oh, three, three words. Yeah. Uh, first comes to mind, quiet and... Um, Both determined mm -hmm. and complicated. Complicated. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All right. Yes. Very nice. Okay, so here we have the question from Alberto Romera from Spain. He says, Hi Ding, I've started to study some opening theory seriously. And I wanted to know how a top-level mm. chess player prepares himself his opening repertoire. Thanks and greetings. Uh, how to study opening? Yes, exactly. Uh, so how do you prepare normally opening theory? Like with the machine or do you read some books or? Uh, yeah, of course, normally I use computer. I use a book from the chess base. Mm -hmm. I books and strong books and also search some high level games uh, from the strong players. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I'm in a very good mood, then I will maybe first I will study the position uh, on board. Uh -huh. I will try to think by myself. Okay. So, so, so for get inside the position. Then I will check with the computer. But this happens not so often mm -hmm. since there are <laughs> many openings to study. Study there. Are... Right. Okay, so, so for, for somebody who is uh, beginning Fine. with chess, would you say that it's more important to, to study which part of the game, like openings, middle game, end game, or maybe do some tactics? So what is the more, most important thing for beginners to, to study? Beginners? Uh, yes. For myself, I used to uh, go uh, study games, study the whole games played by uh, champions, okay. great champions. Yeah. But also do some tactics. OK. Nice. Okay, so we have another question here from Bodhisattva Chatter from the US. He says, hi, Ding. <laughs> In one of your interviews during 2015 World Cup, you mentioned that Wei Yi will be a major contender to you and the top 10 players. What do you think went wrong for him during the last three, four years? Do you think he can still get into the top 10? Uh, well, <coughs> yes, we are very close friends. Mm -hmm. So recently he he stayed on this level for many years, and he uh, he haven't uh, crossed this level for many years. Mm -hmm. I think reasons. Uh, Yeah, of course, it's a very, it's already a very high level, but I think with his talent, he may get to a higher level. But okay. it depends on so many things. And you have to totally focus on chess. You have to sometimes sacrifice your um, Daily life, personal mm -hmm. life. 
Right. So, so he's yeah, doing all other yeah. stuff besides chess too. Educate, like Magnus said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but do you like? I don't know what went wrong for him, but I think his has very big potential. Potential. Do you like his playing style, like this uh, awesome tactics, like uh, aggressive style, or do you prefer your style, like more positional, like taking mm -hmm. fewer risks? Yeah, he he used to, to be a very aggressive and very and an uh, attacking player, but now he's more positional. <laughs> okay, but he also very good calc uh, calculation player. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's uh, definitely a chess beast, right? Yeah. Okay, so Ding, just uh, imagine I want to go for vacation to China. Just try to convince me. What should I do there? What is beautiful in your country? What is the best food in China? Uh, In China, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I live in Wenzhou. I go invite you to my hometown, Wenzhou. Wenzhou, okay. Wenzhou, yes, it's a beautiful city near the sea. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the city is located in the uh, southeast of China near Hangzhou and Shanghai. It's a, mm -hmm. The city is not too big, but uh, I think it's suit, suited for, for staying. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is the best food in your, in your city? In my city is um, seafood. It's, um, seafood? Seafood, yeah. Mm -hmm. Seafood with noodles, for example, or how you take the seafood with rice? Oh, yes, with rice, right. Okay. Here in Spain, we only take potatoes all the time, you know? Potatoes, potatoes with meat, potatoes with oh, fish. Potato and bean food. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I have been bean food in Spain many times, and I like lobsters. You've been to Spain? Yes, many times. Okay, awesome. Where? Yeah. Uh, Barcelona. Barcelona, it's a great city. And one of the friends of my mother, she lives in this city. Okay. So yeah, she invited me to her restaurants, yeah. her Chinese restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very, very good. Really? Loves. You come to Spain and you come to a Chinese restaurant, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, since she invites my mother and me to a restaurant. Okay. Uh, I also heard you're a big fan from of football and basketball, right? Yes, yes. Actually, I, I heard Jan mm, Nepomiachi saying that you are a really good basketball player, that you are fast and you have good <laughs> technique. Is that true? You are the new Yao yeah. Ming? You yeah. are the new Yao Ming? <laughs> <coughs> no, Yao Ming is high and accurate. Yao Min is a bit better, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I, 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 almost, I follow foot, basketball and I follow football every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a so, big fan. Which Even leagues? I, I'm not playing, but I also I like watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you watch? Which leagues? The Chinese league or the Spanish English league or? Uh, for the basketball, I used to watch NBA, but NBA. this season, no NBA in China. Okay. It's uh, very serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I watch uh, Champions League in soccer. Also, uh, Italian League. Italian League, yeah. Okay, actually, for example, in basketball, you said you were following NBA. I think Yao Ming, he played eight years in the Houston Rockets, if I am not Yes, wrong. of course. 
Yeah. Of course I know him. Yeah. So he, he's but, a big celebrity, right, in China. Yeah, but back then I support Lakers. So every time okay. <laughs> the Rockets against the Lakers, there are big fights. And Yao Ming against. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay. Very good memory. All right. So here we have another question. Some from the user Magnus won't beat me <laughs> from Guatemala. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, "Hiding." These are my questions. What do you think mm -hmm. is the best training method for learning chess? And do you prefer open or closed positions? Which one of them is more comfortable to you? Thanks and congrats on your spot in the finals. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I prefer closed position, I think. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, and there are pawn structures, there are, they are closed and stab stable, not like an E4 player, they like opening lines, like, tactics from, from the beginning. So maybe I prefer quiet and, and position games. Okay. So when, when was the last time you played E4, for example, in top, in um, top tournaments? Uh, just, just several days before the last round of the Legion's card. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So another question from Kramik student from India. He says, hello, Dink. Good luck for the upcoming games against Carlsen and also wishing you to finish strongly in the candidates. There is little information available online about your early days. Can you tell us something about it, uh, like how you got into chess and what interested you about chess, early coaches, and favorite player? Uh, my early days, early years. Right, right. Oh, well, I studied chess at four in the club, local club, mm -hmm. like many others. But then I, I continued to study uh, when I was in the middle school, high school, also in the university. Mm -hmm. I studied, I continued. And, Okay. Um, did you were also practicing other sports besides chess when you were a kid, for example, or you were focused 100% in chess from the beginning? Maybe some table tennis. You guys are pretty awesome in table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, table tennis, it's just the hobby. Okay. So only chess, right? Yeah, only focused on chess. Okay. So here, people want to know about your uh, internet uh, problems. Uh, for example, in the Legends Cup, you lost like one or two games. Uh, was that bothering you? Like you were getting angry after losing a game like this? I, I imagine it's not easy, right, to, to deal with this kind of thing. During yeah. The tournament. Of, course. of course, I will be very, very upset if I had a bad internet connection that it will say reconnecting, reconnecting, reconnecting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. I, I get so angry when, when I'm playing like with my friends online. So I cannot imagine in a super tournament, like uh, <laughs> it, it has to be really bad, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so but nothing can do. Just I just tried many ways, tried many VPNs mm -hmm. uh, to solve this problem. But sometimes it happens with no reason. Yeah, I can still open Google and like, like many other websites, uh -huh. which are normally broke in China. Mm -hmm. But, but still sometimes. Or just 24, there is still some problem sometimes. Right, right. So we hope you can fix it for, for the finals. Would be nice. <laughs> so you, uh, yeah. by, the, by the way, your room looks super nice, man. Looks like a sauna. 
like a sauna. Uh, with... Yes, I know it's like sauna, but <laughs> this room is a, a spare room. No, no, it's an uh -huh. extra. There is for for nothing, but sometimes okay. we drink drink tea uh -huh. and and music in there. Yeah, it's a room good. relaxing. Not it's very for, relaxing. Yeah, like you can put a, a jacuzzi there and then have a bath over there, <laughs> play from there. Looks yeah. very nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. By, by the way, talking about uh, internet connection problem, uh, we all remember when Magnus decided to give uh, back his point when you lost yeah. uh, mm -hmm. on connection. What, what, what do you think about this? Uh, you thought it was a good uh, gesture from Magnus or? Yeah, first I don't understand him move cringy five. I thought <laughs> first I thought he might be a surprise, but then <laughs> I finally understand that it was his decision to give up this point. Yeah. Then you realize when he took on D two, now you thought, yeah, maybe <laughs> this was on purpose. No, right? no. <laughs> I know. I, I admire his. Yeah. Uh, his thoughts, his, his idea. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to another question from uh, from Master Gambit, user from uh, Master Gambit. He says, "Do you practice some form of meditation?" Meditation. Meditation. Yeah. So what's med? What is meditation? Like uh, like yoga or something like that. Oh. Activity, sports. Yes, yeah. Uh, no. But just no. All right. Sometimes I I run slowly. Okay. I don't think. All right. So let's move to the next question. Yes, so this is a very interesting one from a user from Mexico. Mr. Ding, unfortunately, in the first part of the candidates, you did not get good results. Do you think the reason mm -hmm. for this was related to the change of plans in your training camp caused by the pandemic? How is your state of mind to face the second half of this tournament? Is your goal still winning it? So I'll be supporting you. I would like you to be the next world champion. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, the change of plans might be a reason. Also, my mood during that time is not so high, it's very low since it's a time when the country is facing great troubles. Right. And every time there are so many news come from every city, every corner. Right. And so so the atmosphere during the tournament is a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. So, so basically, oh, so, there were more, more important things than playing chess at that time for you, right? Mm, I mean, you were, you were thinking about the global problem, right? No, no, I, I cannot say that. OK. <laughs> I mean, just my play is bad. My play. Yeah, they are the reasons, but not the main reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think you still have chances to 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 win in it? <coughs> uh, it's very 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 low. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, <coughs> what is your favorite? Chess book and what is your favorite non chess book? Uh, chess book, I will recommend it, this uh, How to Become Grand Grandmasters by Koto. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, this book play a very big role uh, in my way through my way to become a strong grandmaster. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, favorite book not related to chess? Um, yeah, there are many books. Um, normally, I like reading novels. Mm -hmm. And I can suggest a cassette reel by Raymond Carver. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, how did China produce so many strong players in recent years? This is a question from. Magnus Kasparov from the US. Do you players get special training like back in the days of the Soviet Union when they dominated chess? So basically, mm -hmm. I think they, they want to know more or less how the Chinese school works like in terms of training and stuff like that. No, um, I think it's because uh, there are Mm, more player to study they are going more player they study chess they are focused on chess and uh, there are many talented players and also there are many tournaments in China mm -hmm. so the players will get the chance to improve themselves through the tournaments. Okay, so how is a normal day of training for Jing Liren? Like how many hours do you train? Do you combine it with physical exercise, for example? Or how, how is, a, how is your, your day of training? From the morning to the night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, normally I, I don't like to make the stru structure. No, 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 it's uh, schedule, schedule. Schedule, okay. Yes, I, I don't like to make schedule for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so <coughs> I would like to train when I was in the best mood, when I was in the mood of training. But normally, <coughs> I started to, to train after breakfast. Mm -hmm. I had lunch and I'll go to sleep. So you take a you take a little nap after after lunch. Yes. So you are like, like a Spanish man. In, <laughs> in, in Spain we all do this. We call it siesta, like a little nap after lunch. Yeah. A little nap, but for me it's long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's very important for me, I think. Yeah. To recharge the batteries, right? Mm, I'll sleep for two hours after lunch. Not bad. And then I have more energy. Okay. I'll... And and then you you keep training until night. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um. So another question. Let's see. When I visit China, this is a question from, uh, I must lose to this box. This is the username. And then he <laughs> says, when I visit China, I see many people playing chess in the parks, but they're all playing Chinese chess. Is Western chess becoming yes, more popular yes. in China? Are you a big celebrity in China? Are you the Yao Ming of Chinese chess? He's asking. <laughs> yeah, you, look, you, uh... It's true, yeah, the Chinese chess is more popular in China than chess. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm not a big celebrity in China. I can, I will be recognized sometimes in my buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, not buildings, in my, uh, when I go for a walk mm -hmm. uh, outside of buildings, in this era, sometimes I will get recognized, but not so often. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you also play uh, Chinese chess or just Western chess? Mm, I I know the rules of Chinese chess, but okay. I don't play. All right. 
let's move to the next question then. Um, mm, question from Wankal from Colombia. Hi, Ding. Wankal. <laughs> Uh, he says, hiding. Ivanchuk said that for him, Magnus is not a genius like Fischer or Kasparov. Do you agree? And nowadays, in your opinion, what percentage of talent versus hard work should a player have for being in top 10? Thanks, and I wish you all the best. No, I, I don't agree. Maybe old players, they prefer old guys. Mm -hmm. Since I was in the same ages of Magnus, so I know, of course, he's uh, the best player in our ages. Right. Of course, he has a talent, great talent, compared to the other great champions. OK. Uh, next one from Hungry Eagle from the UK. Dean, I have been really impressed by your play in the last few years. Uh, mm. I hope you recover your form for your match against Magnus. I have two questions. The first one, what motivates you to play good chess? And the second one, what separates the elite, say top 20 players from other GMs? The first one motivates. Yeah. <laughs> What is your Hard biggest motivation? Mm, normally it's from myself, my heart, that I just want to get better results. I want to play better games. I want to improve my play. But sometimes when there are, when I cannot get motivated from myself, I maybe I will, um, read some books, watch some movies like this to the motivation from outside. Okay. On the others. And uh, the second question was uh, mm -hmm. what separates the elite, let's say top 20 players, from other GMs? Um, so, sorry. What uh, what separates the elite? Let's say, what's the difference between the top twenty players and uh, other GMs? <laughs> Just the rating points, right? <laughs> oh. I see the difference. The top twenty players get more <laughs> invitations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, do you want to become so badly world champion or is nothing so special for you? Like you can live with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, do you do you really become uh, you, you really sorry, you really want to become world champion or it's something that is not so special for you? Uh. <laughs> uh. Normally, it's not so special. Yeah. Okay. Since this idea won't come to my mind every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um, let's move to the next one then. And uh, question from George from Germany. Hi, Ding. Thanks a lot for kindly agreeing to this uh, QA. Here are my questions. What was the best mm. piece of advice that you have ever received? Advice. Advice. <laughs> right. Uh, enjoy the games. <laughs> enjoy the games. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it helps me a lot when I was very stressed out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like this one. Uh, if you had the power to change one thing in the chess world, what would it be? Mm. In the chess world. In the chess world. Right. Um, in the world. So you can choose chess world or the normal world. Mm. 
It's such a strong power. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Um, I like this one too. Which superpower would you like to have? Peter Leko answered, "Keep calm under pressure." Uh, no, I like to. I would like to fly. <laughs> <laughs> you like to fly. Yeah, it's super power. <laughs> Sounds good. No. Yeah. By the way, do you guys uh, watch in China Dragon Ball? These funny, <laughs> funny cartoons. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, the river outside my of my home is sometimes there are dragon boats crossing the river. So sometimes <laughs> I them in the okay. home. <laughs> All right, so um, let's move to the to the next question. Sorry, mm. just one second. And uh, yes, question from Marianne. He says or she says, "Hello, Ding. How is the atmosphere during team events, and what do you think helps your team win so many team events?" I think he's referring, of course, <coughs> to the Olympiads, for example. Yeah. And what helped you to cross 2,800 yeah. and remain unbeaten in that uh, famous trade? So first, first, uh, um, yeah. first the one, yes, the autumn here be between all Chinese players, uh, normally it's very good and peaceful. And we will uh, make jokes also discussing the uh, upcoming tournaments and upcoming games mm -hmm. and, and we will have a group in wechat and we will talk everything we like so so you guys are friends uh, between each other right uh, yes although not close friends but we but are Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you train together, the Olympic team, or just separately? No, no, no. no. So together? No. No, no, not separately. together. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So let's go. The second question. No, no, the second question. Right. The second question was what helped you to cross 2800 and remain unbeaten? And what different things did you do that you were not yes. doing before? Yeah. Yes, it's a very memorable uh, time back then. I remember I um, I broke my um, my foot in Norway. Ah, doing then, uh, cyc cycling, right? Yes, cycling. Yes, it's uh, it's in June, and then I went back home, and I uh, rest for about two months. Then the next tournament in Wenzhou, in my hometown, is my match against the Toparov. It's in that match that I beat him. I crossed the twenty-eight hundred. Arrows. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I think during that time I'm very, very I studied very, very hard. Since there are not so many, not other things I can do, other activities, other hobbies. So I'm very, very focused on chess at that okay. time. Mm -hmm. so, so yes. Are you saying that falling with the bike was a, a good move to cross? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can say that. <laughs> All right. I, my, I, I can say I played my best chess during that period of time. Mm -hmm. Also, Olympiad uh, later September, which I became. I got the gold, gold medal mm -hmm. in the yeah. Right. Also, I 
I achieved 100 games on Beaten Street mm -hmm. during that time. Okay. And, and do you think you have reached your peak or you can still get uh, higher? Um, yeah, I must say that I was at one at a peak, at the peak. But I hope, like the mountains, there are many peaks. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, although now I'm slightly uh, worse than my best, but I hope that I can get higher. Get back there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, read some more questions. Uh, for example, here, who do you think is the player that has better chances to beat Magnus Carlsen in a world championship? Is it you? Is it Fabi? Is it Hikaru Nakamura? Uh, who do you think? <laughs> Oh, well, I, I would like to say Fabi. Fabi. <laughs> Number two in the world, Fabiano Caruana. Mm -hmm. And do you think you can beat Magnus in, uh, in a world championship match? Like 14 games, classical games, and then tie break with rapid games. Do you think you have real chances? Mm, yeah, everybody has chances, but... Mm -hmm. Not me. <laughs> no. Awesome. Okay, but do you think uh, any any player in the top 10 um, would give a good fight to Magnus, right? In a world championship match, right? Or some of them? Mm, yes, I think so. Okay. All right, so um, what are your hobbies besides chess? Do you go to the cinema? You like reading? You like dancing? Hip hop. <laughs> um, normally, I just stay alone. I sometimes I just uh, watching TVs and surfing the internet and. Uh, sometimes reading, listening, music, also just go for a walk and uh, just thinking something. Mm -hmm. So are you watching the series, for example, like famous series? No. no. Okay, you don't, you don't follow series. All right. <clears throat> Great. Mm, more questions. By the way, you know you have a lot of fans in Spain and Latin America, people are crazy about you. So you should you should play you should play one day here in Spain. Uh, you will see how many people uh, admire you. You know, <laughs> trust me, uh, trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would like to go abroad. I like to travel to Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. have you been to to South America, for example, Latin America? Mm, no, I haven't been there before. Okay, it's a good place too, man. Yeah. All right, more questions for Ding Liren. Um, so, what emotions did you feel when you managed to become world number three? <laughs> this is a question from Giorgio <coughs> Mackay. Well, First, I'll be excited, but then it can calm. Mm -hmm. Won't last so long. Then yeah. I... <laughs> okay. And let me see if I have some more questions here. Mm. Right. Just one second. Here. And. Right, I have one here from, from Jordi again. If you had a time machine, would you rather travel to the past and which specific one or to the future? 
and what will you look at in the future? Peter Leko wanted to visit the Japanese samurai era. What? What? Japanese? Japanese samurai. Samurai. Samurai, like the fighters. Um, well, I, I would like to travel to the future. To the future? Yeah, since I already know what happened before and then nothing to change. So I would like to see what happens in the future. Right, sounds reasonable so, to me. <laughs> some, uh, space travel, if I had a chance mm -hmm. to see outside the Earth. Okay, so, uh, yep. Since I read the novel Three Bodies by a very good Chinese writer, Liu Cixin, it's very famous novel. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> by the way, people want to know if you follow a specific diet, like to improve your performance in chess, for example, or do you eat whatever you prefer and that's it? No, no diet. No <laughs> diet, right? <laughs> yes, it's no, uh, no chief and yes, I don't have a team. So, mm. <coughs> so you don't have a team uh, working nobody with you. I mean, nobody, uh, nobody prepared a menu, menu, menu for me. Okay. And uh, what's your favorite food, by the way? Mm. I think uh, steaks. And steaks. Fish. Yeah, steaks. Okay. Fish. Awesome thing. So I have a small surprise for you because uh, I wanted to uh, remember a great moment where you beat Magnus Carlsen in the Singfield Cup. So I tried to add yeah. Chinese commentary to the game. You have to tell me if you understand something, what I have just taught in this mini video. Mm -hmm. So, you see the screen, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so this is your game. Now our producer is going to put this image in the show. So this is your game. This is a really important mm -hmm. moment, right? Against Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. And now you can listen like for 20 seconds. This is for... Dingliren, Mashan, Changwei, Magnus Carlsen. Xi She Tao E7, She Hang Hao, Tai Bang Lo, Takan La, Ding Li Ren, She Lao Ban, Ra Ta 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 Ta, Wo Fong La. Did you understand something? <laughs> yes, he said, in the booth, and I'm getting crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, I talked to you because I was living with a Chinese friend, you know? when I was studying in Italy mm. and he taught me some, some, some sentences. For example, I'm hungry, you say, hola, right? Hola, uh, yeah. I, I'm thirsty, wo cola, right? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but by the way, I wanted to ask you about this uh, moment. Uh, you see the board, right? Now here in my yeah. screen. Okay, I wanted to ask you uh, about this uh, specific moment. <laughs> when uh, you get to this position at the end, when he took on d6, and now you played bishop f4, and then you had seen <coughs> the reply against bishop c5. Yes, awesome. Yes, awesome. I have seen that. Yeah, wow. but I, okay, I just saw it. Although I didn't check it, I, I just think it's the first time that it works. Right, because and this it, is a, Amazing move because at the bishop c5, the only move that wins is knight e7, right? Otherwise, yeah. you are just losing, right? Yeah. yeah. But the audience should should enjoy this moment because Ding Liren here in this position. Now, Magnus was threatening the bishop on c6 and mate on f8, and Ding played knight e7. Such a beautiful move. 
Yeah, with two ideas. With three. No, two. <laughs> what are the Prevent three ideas? Preventing mate, protect the bishop, and threatening mates. Wow. This was such an amazing move. I was so amazed when I was following this game. Because, uh, as you say, you're covering the bishop, you're covering the mate, and now rook h1 is checkmate. So, beautiful. So, do you want maybe to go through the game? Because we still have like 20 minutes or something? Mm, okay. <laughs> maybe too much. Just uh, very quick, so people can see. So here, the Spanish against Magnus. First of all, why Magnus can't take this pawn on e5, Ding? So mm, after rook e8. Oh, I think Ding. Right? <laughs> Internet problems. So it happened during the Legends. OK. No, we're back live. Uh, sorry, guys, small internet problem, but now we are back here with Ding Liren. And uh, I was asking you why Magnus can't take this pawn on e5. I think take, take. I can play bishop p7. Sorry, bishop? 95. Yes. Bishop b7. Bishop b7, and then you have a lot of. Conte player, at least. Let's say, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. A lot of pressure in the need for. Okay. Yeah. So that's why mm -hmm. he, decide to, he decides to close the position. And I really like the way you played from this point, too. Now you bring all the pieces mm -hmm. to the queen side. Queen side, yeah. Rook c8. And the knight to c5. <coughs> were you afraid at this point about the, his uh, attacking chances on the king side, or you thought you were really, really solid here, and nothing could happen to you? Um, well, I have no time to be afraid. I need to uh, play get my queen side, come play on queen side as soon as possible. Okay. So people also, are saying. Yeah, so, sorry, one second thing, because the yeah. people are saying they cannot uh, watch the, the, the board. So let's wait two seconds. And OK, now it's it's there. Yeah, tell me, Ding. Mm -hmm. You uh, were saying, Ding? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with b4, I got more space on the queen side. Mm -hmm. I get bishop b5 or queen b5. Okay. Rookie one, so there's no bishop b5, right? Mm -hmm. Five and rook c7, doubling rooks. <clears throat> e3, rook c8, and d2. <coughs> Magnus, Magnus wanted to style yeah, a. Yeah, idea. Yeah. So this idea is so easy to find, actually. Mm -hmm. Before he played more, mostly focused on the king side, but then he changed his mind to play on the king, queen side. Mm -hmm. a good move. I did. And now it looks like a nice blockade on c4. So that's why you retreated the queen to, to put pressure with the bishop on b5. Mm -hmm. I remember only when he played b3, I, I found his idea to play nice c4. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. C four, it should be five. And there's a, this is another important moment, right? Because here uh, you yeah. see this exchange sacrifice or yeah, but 
If I didn't play rook c3, I have to go back the bishop. It's not something I, I like. Yeah, it's too passive. I, I go back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you played uh, <coughs> aggressively with rook c3, <coughs> a3 from Magnus, and now knight c6. But you said, you know what? I don't care. I just take this guy and take this guy. Queen is under attack. You took another pawn. Yeah, G5. Point. So and now, important. looks like white is winning a piece, but then you found this nice resource, bishop a8. Yeah. And so you're coming with all the guys here. <laughs> Queen takes, knight d5, and this is the... Here are some games of Nadorf comes to my mind, since why the structure reminds me of uh, Nadorf. Mm -hmm. the, to the Nadorf, you say, yeah? Nadorf, yes, Nadorf. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you saw the whole combination from this point, I guess. Bishop g5, bishop f4, and knight e7. Mm, I forgot. Okay. I don't remember. I, I know. This was very, very nice. Bishop f4, bishop c5, and knight e7. Well, what, what a fantastic game from, from Dean Lee then. I think all the audience enjoyed this a lot. So we have 10 more minutes. So let's see if we have some more questions. Otherwise, we can wrap up this session and let Mr. Ding Liren go for sleep. And let's ask uh, the two, three last questions uh, again from Mr. Jordi. <coughs> hmm. If there was a magic button that could immediately delete all chess engines and prevent their reappearance forever, would you push this button? To delete all the chess engines? Yeah, exactly. No, no chess engines in the world now. So after after that uh, bottom, yeah. So <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> so well, it's a superb decision. Then I'm, it's a tough decision, I, right? Yeah, I can make it. So, um, do you think like uh, engines favor like your play, or you would be even a better player compared to the others if there were no engines? Like, so mm. you keep you keep the engines alive, right? Of course, I, I have get many benefits from the engines. Mm -hmm. It helped me a lot before, also, and now. Um, but in the future, I think, yes, players should um, study their own more than using Android engines. Mm -hmm. I think it's a way to improve at that level. Okay, awesome. Uh, another small question. If you had to spend another quarantine, let's say two or three months, with a player of uh, of the circuit from the top twenty, let's say, who would you choose to spend your time? Mm, can I choose Chinese players? Of course, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, choose Wei. So you'll get your Chinese colleagues. Yeah. We... Okay. And uh, okay, so let's ask you the last question so you can finally go to sleep. <laughs> and uh, let me choose a good one. Hmm. Um, well, if you were not a chess player, what would you be doing in your life? Maybe a pilot? Maybe a chef? <laughs> It's a very, very Ten big question. Tennis player? <laughs> yeah, if I'm not chess player, if I can choose any, any profession I want, 
-hmm. there are two tries. Um, like B, uh, if I can draw, if I can painting, mm -hmm. if I can um, playing instruments, mm -hmm. we can artist. Like an artist. Yeah. Okay. And um, last question. This is a personal question from myself, like because. I love the Philidor defense. Like, uh, what do you think about this defense? Do you think it's playable in top chess? For example, Dubov has been employing it against Magnus Carlsen with some success in the in the last tournaments yes. in the Magnus Tour. Yes, it's, of course, it's playable. Yeah, it's a uh, it brings some dynamic play. Although Black stays passive at first, but then. It counterplay on the queen side sometimes. Right. Well, yeah, bring him advantage. Okay, so it's been a pleasure for me, Dean Liren, to to be here chatting for a bit. I think the audience have enjoyed a lot, and uh, probably you are one of the players that the audience love more. So, <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing, like uh, playing this super chess, being so humble. And thanks a lot for, for being here with us today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, Ding. Bye bye. Good night. Right, guys so this has been all for today uh, as you have seen Ding Lirand a fantastic person right besides a tremendous chess player for me it's been a pleasure as usual to be here in the English uh, chess 24 section and hope to see you more often here in the English uh, section so it's been a pleasure as usual so uh, just uh, take care wherever you are uh, stay healthy and see you soon bye